Hello, biology class. Welcome back to the last lecture in the um, unit, I believe, uh, lesson nine. This is cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Uh, as you can see, that's two of the three key points there, two and three. And then we have ATP as key point one, which we'll get into right away here. So um, we're gonna talk about the similarities and differences between cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Um, you'll remember we talked about a while ago in this unit, it was internal respiration and external respiration. So external respiration was actually getting the air into our body. And then internal respiration is the using of oxygen uh, by our cells. So we're going to talk about that and how it mirrors the process uh, of photosynthesis. So first of all, let's talk about energy. Our body uses energy all the time. No matter what you're doing, sitting, sleeping, moving, uh, just doing nothing at all, you're using energy. You use energy to heat yourself, move around, to think, to breathe, many more things. And this energy that we burn is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so knowing ATP and adenosine triphosphate is important. This is what that molecule looks like. So we've got adenosine over here, this and this is adenosine. And then we've got one, two, three phosphates. So PO4 is a phosphate ion. We've got tri, one, two, three of them. And this bond over here that's highlighted in yellow is a bond that has a lot of energy in it. And if we wanna use that energy, if we wanna extract that energy, we need to break that bond. So when we break that bond, we uh, energy is released and we can use it. So cellular respiration is when our cells use oxygen to make energy or ATP, and then we produce carbon dioxide as the byproduct. So this is internal respiration. Internal respiration and cellular respiration are the same. So we breathe in the oxygen, it goes to our cells, we use that oxygen to make energy, and carbon dioxide is a byproduct which we need to breathe out. So we call ATP the energy currency of the body. And cellular respiration is done by animals. So humans are animals. Uh, in contrast, photosynthesis occurs in plants. So all animals take in oxygen and release CO2 while making energy for themselves. Um, and they, may, they breathe out CO2 um, which is an exact opposite of what happens in photosynthesis. So cellular respiration again uses oxygen and sugar, which we learned about in the nutrients unit, to create carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And here is the um, overall equation. We've got glucose here, we've got oxygen here, we have CO2 here, water here, and energy or ATP. So glucose and oxygen combine to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And we get this glucose from the food that we eat, whether that be pasta, uh, whether that be uh, food that we ate, stored as fat, and then broke down. But we use glucose, oxygen to make energy, and CO2. That's the most important part here. So one molecule of glucose, or one sugar molecule, can make 38 molecules of ATP. Um, so that's 38 units of energy. Um, what can we use? What can we do with one unit of energy? Um, it's really nothing at all. You use um, millions and millions of these throughout the day. Um, so you recycle them. You use them and then you recycle them. Um, so units of energy they are very very small and you use a ton of them, which is why you need a ton of glucose and you need a ton of oxygen. You need to continually breathe throughout your entire life. That's how much oxygen you need. It is a huge amount of oxygen that is required by our body to continue this process, and a huge amount of glucose as well. So um, that's why it's very important that you eat well, that you eat enough food, and that you, you know, have a healthy respiratory system so that you can create the ATP, or the energy that is needed throughout the entire day and through your entire life. A human will typically use up his or her body weight of ATP over the course of a day. So you use it over and over and over and over again uh, to power everything that you do. 
um, each equivalent of ATP. So each ATP molecule is recycled 1,000 to 1,500 times during a single day. I cannot impress upon you enough how much energy you use just sitting there and how much oxygen and glucose is required to sustain you. Uh, it is a lot. So here's a diagram of um, the, this is the external respiration. Air comes in, oxygen moves into the blood cells, CO2 moves out, and then CO2 is expelled. And then the oxygen is brought in the bloodstream to our cells where we uh, have internal respiration or we use that oxygen to create energy and we expel the CO2 where it is then brought back to the lungs. So this uh, process is exactly the opposite of photosynthesis. Um, we create CO2 as a byproduct, but trees, plants, grasses, vegetables, they can all use that CO2 to grow. So we can't use CO2, but plants can. Uh, photosynthesis is the exact opposite process of cellular respiration. Uh, you can see that plants take in carbon dioxide, they take in water from the soil, and they take in energy from the sun to produce oxygen and glucose. That glucose is what they use to build themselves up, to get stronger and to get uh, larger, um, to create stems and fruits and vegetables. Um, that is what the glucose is used for. You'll notice that this slide is the exact opposite of the cellular respiration slide. Cellular respiration had animals taking in oxygen and glucose and producing carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of ATP. So these two processes are complementary. Uh, one goes one way and one goes the other. You would not be able to have plants without animals and vice versa because animals produce oxygen and, uh, sorry, animals produce CO2 while plants use it. Uh, they are, it goes in a cycle. So overall, cellular respiration and photosynthesis are opposite processes. Cellular respiration uses O2 uh, or oxygen and produces carbon dioxide while photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and produces oxygen. So understanding this very important relationship is key for this lesson. Um, essentially, plants keep the world stocked with oxygen so we can continue to breathe, while animals use the oxygen and produce CO2 so plants can continue to live. It's a symbiotic relationship. What I'd like you to do, and this is the hand-in um, assignment for this unit, is uh, I'd like you to do some research about the Amazon rainforest uh, and how this process of um, carbon dioxide and oxygen being transferred back and forth is being dis pardon me is being disrupted. So in the last two years in the Amazon rainforest, a huge amount of trees have been burned or cut down. Uh, what I'd like you to do is do some research about deforestation and write a one-page report detailing what is happening and why. So the keys there: what is happening in the rainforest with deforestation, and why it is happening. So some questions for you to consider. How much of the rainforest has been cleared recently? Why are they clearing the trees and what do they plan to do with that land? Um, are there efforts to prevent this from happening? And just more generally, what will happen to the balance between oxygen and CO2 if humans continue on the current path of deforestation and using fossil fuels? So uh, it should be at least a one page report. I've given you space to do the rough copy in the booklet and I'll set up a Google um, assignment so you can hand it in there uh, but this I believe is the end of the unit if you have any questions about anything here please let me know uh, and I will hopefully see you in class as soon as possible thanks very much everyone